Drag queens, dog people, trans kids, and queer churches. It's an interesting world, isn't it? Hello, I'm here in Apex. Uh, it's Pride Month and there's a Pride Festival going on just uh, trying to see what everyone's opinions are. Let's go see. This last week I visited Apex Pride Festival in Apex, North Carolina. I only knew of it after a recent controversy involving a drag queen story hour. Earlier this week, it seemed that Drag Queen Story Hour would not be included in this year's Apex Pride, as the original sponsors of the event, the Apex Festival Commission, pulled the activity from the day's lineup due to threats of violence. The activity was restored after another group, Equality NC, stepped in to sponsor Apex Pride in place of the Festival Commission the News and Observer previously reported. It felt really important for us to hold down this space for the community, to work with folks who are supportive of the LGBTQ community, and make sure that the focus was not on the people who hate us, but the focus was on us and having these safe spaces, Kendra R. Johnson, Executive Director of Equality NC, told the NNO at Saturday's event. See, now, there's this idea on both sides of the issue, whether you're in support of it or not, that the only emotion going back and forth between each side is hate. I wanted to know more about this, so I went to the festival and got an interview. It also seems like there's there's a lot of people in support, obviously, that come out to festivals like this, but there's also a lot of people that you know, that are like opposed to this kind of stuff. And I'm just interested if you guys heard about that kind of stuff, what's your opinion on it? Unfortunately, this turned out to be my only interview, because I'm not very good at cold calling people, especially in person. But the question still has to be asked. What can be done about this? First, we have to address the reasons for this gap. There is a general idea that Christians and conservatives hate, and want to hate, LGBT people because the Bible tells them to. And there's also the idea that all LGBT people are demons that need nothing but scorn and shunning. Neither are true. Let's clear up both problems. From the Christian perspective, there certainly are Bible verses that talk about homosexuality, fornication, and other sins, but there's also plenty of Bible verses that talk about loving one's enemies, treating them kindly, and guiding them in the right direction. From the LGBT perspective, there certainly are plenty of people who see nothing wrong with their lifestyles and just want to live their lives in peace, and they see Christians as pushy, invasive, and judgmental. But there are also plenty of LGBT people who don't like their lives and wonder if there's more to life than just your sexuality. All of these things can be true. Frankly, there's a lot of misunderstanding. I'm a Christian and I believe in the deity of Jesus Christ, but there's plenty of people who disagree with me and no matter how many times I tell them Jesus loves you, they won't hear it. So that's a non-starter. So that leaves the question of finding common ground. Where do we find common ground at all? Here are some things we can hopefully agree on. Life is often painful. Our lives are pretty short, and everyone has to face death someday. We all want to be happy in the meantime, but happiness is fleeting and temporary. We all find ourselves in the cycle of happiness and sadness, good and bad, hope and despair. So where does that leave us? If there are things that are true, regardless of anyone's opinion, then that's proof that objective truth exists. For example, 
We all have DNA. It's a part of all of our beings, and you can take a blood sample and just find it. It works for everybody, and it's true regardless of what everybody thinks. So that's objective truth, right? Another example. The sun exists. Pretty simplistic, I know, but hear me out. If you go outside and the sky is clear and it's noontime, you'll be able to see the sun. That's the same for everyone, and it doesn't change based on anyone's opinion. If we can at least agree on truth, objective truth existing, then we can have conversations about and solutions to anything. We might not always agree on the subject, and we'll certainly fight a lot, but progress can only be made if we agree that objective truth exists. So if objective truths exist, and they can be helpful in bridging the gap between these two opposing sides, are you seeking them out? If not, why not? What have you got to do that's better? Lie to yourself? Don't you want real happiness, real purpose, instead of chasing dopamine highs and opaline lies? Start at the basics. Figure out that objective truth exists, and we can get somewhere. Watch this if you want more commentary on objective truth, and watch this if you want to see a list of things that the Bible actually doesn't say. Either way, I'll see you next time.